Hi, this is Seth David from the World Famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about understanding the statement of cash flows, part two, analyzing the statement of cash flows. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We record the live session for you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards. Okay, so here we are looking at a sample company file at all three major financial statements. And it's important to understand if you're going to do cash flow projections, for example, all three of these financial statements and how they relate to one another. And I believe, it's my opinion, that they should be looked at in this exact order. First we look at the balance sheet, then we look at the profit and loss, and then we look at the statement of cash flows. And if you've signed up for the live webinar this Friday, which is October 14th, 2011, and you're going to see, as I develop those cash flow projections, exactly why that is. And if, you, if it's after that date and you haven't signed up, you'll be able to go onto the website and download the recording. Stay tuned. At the end of this video, I'll show you exactly where you need to go. But for now, I want to get right into the material here. It's important to understand how these financial statements relate to one another so that we can analyze the statement of cash flows, which is the purpose of today's screencast. Notice the statement of cash flow starts with net income. We went over this in last week's screencast. And it ends with the cash at the end of the period. And the purpose of the statement of cash flows in one respect is to reconcile everything in between. How do we get from net income to cash? Well, where do these numbers come from? Let's start there. The ending cash balance can be found, of course, on the balance sheet. In fact, so can the net income. Because if you remember from the prior screencasts, net income down here, 138000 flows over to the equity section of the balance sheet for the same period. Once you get past the fiscal year end date, this number gets closed out to retained earnings. So how do we use this information to analyze the statement of cash flows? Well, let's use the example that I brought up previously about how the statement of cash flows often finally comes up. Because the mistake most business owners make is they go run the profit and loss. They say, okay, I made 140000 this year. I'm good. Let's go home. The problem is that fails to take into account the whole picture. And usually what happens is sometime after that, they come back to me and they say, wait a minute, Seth, if I made 140000 how come I only have 55000 in the bank? And I say, oh, I'm glad you asked. Why don't we take a look at the statement of cash flows, the often forgotten and important and often overlooked financial statement, the statement of cash flows. And looking at this one here, I can see almost immediately where the problem is because we made it a, a profit. We have net income of 138000 but look what happened here. We drew out 123000 Now, I can almost guarantee you that if this were actually my client and I was showing this to them, they'd say, I didn't take out that much. And I'd say, oh, yes, you did. And we double-click the number, and I run the report, and I show them every single check that represents their draws for the year. This is what they drew out, right? We can see all these checks, each of them over $10,000, never less than that. And then they look at that and say, oh, yeah, I guess I did take that much out. And if we're looking at this, and it really is December 15th, and we have a couple weeks left in the year, and if the client's goal is to get financing from the bank or, or if they're looking for an investor to come in and invest in the company, what I might tell them is, if you can do it, let's take $100,000 out of your personal account and put it back into the company so that when I run a year-end financial statement, this won't show up like this. It'll show 23000 in draws instead of 123000 because if you paid attention to the previous screencast, most businesses have as their goal the idea that they want to grow. And in order to do that, we really want to have as our goal on a financial level the idea that we want to build up the equity section of our balance sheet. Ultimately, that's the goal. If we're growing, if we're earning a profit, and if we're retaining those profits so that the company can finance itself, can finance its own growth, which is the best way, because this way I don't have to give away any ownership and I don't have to pay interest on loans, then and the, the way to do that is to build the equity section, to retain the earnings and build that up. The reason why we made 140000 but at the end of the day we have total equity of only 25000 is because we pulled most of the profits out of the company, and the statement of cash flow shows this so clearly. What else does the statement of cash flows tell us? Well, it tells me again, and let me bring this back down to size for a minute. It tells me again how I get from net income to cash. It shows me the changes in account balances. Notice accounts receivable. In last week's screencast, I showed you how if I bill for 2500 
but I haven't collected that money, then that's $2,500 that's in net income that has to be deducted from net income to arrive at cash because I haven't been paid yet. So you're going to look at this balance sheet and you're going to say, well, accounts receivable shows $22,000. Why am I only subtracting eight? And the answer is when I run this and I analyze this from year to year, it's not the balance, it's the change in the balance. So accounts receivable increased by the 8,000. It went from 14,000 to 22,000, which means that I've billed $8,000 more than what I collected during the year, during the time period that we're reporting on. So that's $8,000 that's in net income that I haven't collected yet, it has to be subtracted. And you go on down the line. We went over this last week in terms of how to understand how the statement of cash flows is put together. Today I want to analyze it. I want to say, all right, what does this tell us about my company? Where well, I already gave you a big piece of that picture. It shows me where the money went, right? I can look at this and say, well, here's why we don't have 140000 in the bank plus whatever we started with, which was 34000 it also shows me where the cash flow is coming from. I have three sections here. I have my operating activities, which includes the net income, because that's the ultimate outcome of operations is what did I earn in net income, minus what I haven't collected yet from my income, plus any monies that I've received that I haven't expensed out yet or that didn't impact income, monies that I've received that don't represent income, like customer deposits. This tells me we've got 7,000 in customer deposits that we collected during the year that we haven't earned out yet. Once we earn it out, it'll show up in this number and it will, it will leave here, it will leave this section. So the operating activities is the first section of the balance sheet. It shows me in this case that 145,000 of our cash flows came from operating activities. In fact, when you really look at this big picture wise, it tells me that substantially all the cash inflows are coming from operations, which is great. That means this company is doing well. In fact, the next section, investing activities, notice we're looking at fixed asset accounts here. This means we invested some money back into the company, which is a good thing. We used some of our profits to pay for additional computer and office equipment, which is a positive. And then we get to the problem, which I've already pointed out to you under the financing activities, which is that we've got 123000 that we took out of the company. We did not retain almost any of the profits that we made. Now, the other thing that you'll see here is if you do borrow money from the bank or if the owner actually finances the company out of his or her own pocket, those will show up as positive cash flows in these sections. We're financing the company. We're taking in investment money. And again, what that means is that the cash flows are coming from financing or investing activities. If those cash flows are positive, what it tells me is that we're not making enough money in the operations to sustain the business. That's why we have to borrow money or we have to seek investment. Now, that might be a positive if we have to do it on sort of a one-time basis so that we can finance additional growth of the company that we could never have done on our own. But if it continues that way, then that's a bad sign. If we keep seeing that cash flows are coming from investing and financing activities and not from operations, then that's a sign of a problem potentially. So the real big point is, if I'm doing a cash flow projection, I need to do it taking all of this, this whole picture into account. I need to look at all three financial statements. I need to take a look at that and see what does the balance sheet tell me about what's going on with the company? What does the profit and loss tell me? And where do I want to see that going in the long term. So to do a statement of cash flows projection is to really take the whole picture into account. You don't want to just project a check register. So many bookkeepers I've worked with before I really had this kind of a discussion with them would say to me, oh, I know how to do a cash, I can do a cash flow projection. And all they're doing is taking the, the bank account, check register, and they're projecting the balance in that account. They're saying, here are the checks we're going to write. Here are the deposits I know we're getting in the next few weeks. And, and adding that to the beginning balance as of today, this is, this is what we'll have in the bank at the end of a couple of weeks. And I say, great, but that doesn't give me the whole picture. There's so much more that's going on. So I love it when people say, oh, I've got statement of cash flows. I've got cash flow projections covered. And I always kind of laugh inside. I say, I hope so. But it's, it, it, let's put it this way. If I had a, a bookkeeper or even, even an accountant come to me at this point and show me how, that they use the statement of cash flows ultimately to do a cash flow projection, I think it'd be a first. I don't think I've ever had somebody come to me and actually show me how they project the statement of cash flows. Not an easy thing to do. And we're going to go over it in a live webinar this coming Friday, October 14, 2011. If it's after that date, you can download the recording. Just come over to my website at nerdenterprises.com, click on the events section, and make sure you scroll down. If your monitor is smaller, you might not see it. Scroll down and go to the cash flow projections right here and either sign up or download it depending if it's before or after the 14th. As always, if you have questions, email me, Seth at nerdenterprises.com. 
I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web. This has been a special presentation brought to you by Nerd Enterprises Incorporated on understanding the statement of cash flows, part two, analyzing the statement of cash flows. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now for private trainings at 866-945-8070. We record the live session for you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards.